You're fucking disgusting. Should we wake it up? Because I can really done your dance. Wouldn't the smart thing to do would be leave me alone? Yeah, Vex. Just know he's very much bothered, but he's bothered privately. <laughs> he would get so fucking triggered. Nothing would trigger him like me calling him manipulative. That's what you are. Because he's trying to stop my money. So I want money. Can I claim? <laughs> you want to play? <laughs> you want to play? 35. Having an affair with a 19 year old. Man was flabbergasted. Thinking, <gasps> you sold your car. She's making moves that I don't know about. You upset? What's it to you, pal? <laughs> What's it to you there, bud? What a fucking weirdo. Never bought me a birthday cake in my life. In my life. Thanks a lot for leaving me when I need you the most. And look in me a room, screaming in my face. Man said he was going to commit suicide if I left him. You trying to mess with my money knowing I've got a child to look after. The videos only get views when I'm in them anyway. How? How, how are you jealous? And this is what I'm saying out of spite. Oh, it's more than a bit of cheating. Mental abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse. Oh, thrown things at me, had me by my neck, shaking me up, fling me down. So let's wake it the fuck up. Try to get Aaliyah tech with from me. Yeah, bitch, I'ma fuck with your money. Just so you don't get no money. But how dare I end things with him? Not great almighty him. He's vex na vex. And she's gonna be homeless. Okay, where do I start? We all know why I'm here. I never thought I'd be doing this. I feel like I'm forced to do this. I don't like doing these type of videos. Like, this ain't no clapback video, by the way. This ain't no hate video. It's getting out of hand now. No, this is actually really bad. Like, this is really, really bad. Like, this is not right. This is like slander. This is liberal defamation of my name. Like, this is illegal. And I have a right to defend myself. Like, I, I have to defend myself now. I never wanted to do this. I actually never wanted to do this. I never thought it would come to this. But here we are now, isn't it? Like, this is, this is what it is. We're here now, isn't it? So you're going to hear my side of the story. This is the one video I'm going to do as well. There ain't going to be no other videos after this. I know you're looking at me right now thinking, this guy's this, this guy's... Like, I've had the names of narcissist. I've had the name of abusive, abuser physical and mental. I've had the, 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 the name of wicked man. I've had the, the name of a controller. Like all these words, are, it's, it's madness. I can't have these words on me. It's not real. This is like something out of EastEnders. This ain't real, man. Like, and everyone's falling for it. Everyone's falling for this charade. Don't get it twisted. Listen, this is one thing I will admit. Yes, I cheated. I cheated in my marriage. Yes, I did. I cheated in the relationship. I did in 2019. That was the last time I found God in 2020. I was lost. I was a lost soul. I never knew who I was. I was going through depression in 2016 when I did because I was boxing. I got hit with a brick. I, I, I was told I can't box again. So I was going through depression. I started smoking weed and all that. And then in that process, after I picked myself up out of depression, I cheated. I did. No one's perfect in this world. We're all human learning through this life. We don't go... That was my first relationship. My first... Listen, I've been with girls prior to before, but that was my first relationship. So I was learning on the job. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. We're all learning in this life. We Listen, we learn, we, we change, and we grow. Or we learn, we grow, and we change. No one's perfect. You can't hand me from a tree because I freaking cheated. I cheated. She knew I cheated. She stayed. I cheated again. She stayed. Is that my fault? I know I cheated. I know it's wrong. I'm not, you know, saying cheating's right. It was very wrong. And I really, I know that now. I was lost. I was lost. If you cheat on someone, that means you don't want to be with that person. End of story. That's the truth. I never held her by her neck to say, stay with me, not going nowhere. We carried on. The last time I did cheat, we moved into a whole new place together. I can't drag someone with me after I cheated if, if she didn't forgive me. Like, we moved on. But anyway, look, I'm going to get into all of that 
after I show you some stuff because all the stuff that's been said about me right now is wrong. And I have a right to defend myself, which I'm gonna do now. Let's just get into it, man. Do you wish you never married Ahmed? No. Oh. No. I, I'm not gonna act like we had a horrible, horrible time together. Can't be like we were that. together for 12 years at the end of the day. Clearly, there was good times. Clearly, there was amazing times. He was my best friend. So, no. But, um, no, I don't regret it. Because if I didn't marry him, I don't think I would be who I am today. And that's the thing. And I'm, I'm happy with who I am today. So. And you're growing, and that's it. That's it. And as you keep saying, if it's meant to be, it will be in the never future or in however it will be. Do you yeah. get it? You lot, there's no bad time. I'm not going to take no... away. Like, at the end of the day, you don't marry someone that you're not in love with or you don't marry someone that you don't have something no with that. like literally that man was my best friend and he will say the same thing of course literally so no i'm not ever gonna downplay it and i like it weren't nothing it was definitely something a big part of my life and i'll never forget it hmm. never i don't hate him i still have a lot of love for him if he was in trouble he can call me i'm a pick up mm -hmm. vice versa if i'm in trouble I know I can call him. If it comes down to the nitty gritty and serious things, I've got him and I would like to believe he's got me. 100%. I'm positive, I'm confident that I he's feel got like, me. I feel like he's got you. Like, we're there, we just, it is what it is. I'm not gonna say too, mm. yeah. If I'm this horrible, controlling, narcissistic, manipulator, abusive person, would someone say that they had an amazing time together, 12 years, and you'll never forget it? Would someone say they are who they are today because of that person? Would someone say they have a lot of love for someone who abused and manipulated them and controlled them and never did anything for them? Would someone say I have a lot of love for that person? Would you say you have a lot of love for that person? A lot of love, would you? Would you say that if I called, I would pick up and... I got him and I hope that he's got me. Would you want to see that person? This is eight months ago, by the way. This is like six months after I left. Would someone say all this stuff? Would someone say all this stuff to their abuser that was wicked to them, that did nothing for them, that did all these, this stuff that is said about me? Would someone who did that to that person would say all this stuff? Would they? Really deep it. You've seen what she said, that she's a victim of mental, physical abuse. She's been controlled, manipulated. This is six months after you fleed your, your abuser. Would a victim say something like this about their abuser? Really think about it, would they? If you're a victim of abuse, would you say anything like that? You'll be happy that you fled them. I know real women that have gone through real abuse. And not, no, I've asked them, not, no way they would say anything like this. They're happy they fled. They're happy that they fleed their abuser. They would have nothing good to say about them. Like this is actually taking the mick out of real people that have gone through real abuse, mental and physical, who are real victims that have gone through real trauma. Would someone who has gone through this say something like this about that person that has put them through torture? Would they? She's having a laugh. This is a joke. Everyone's falling for it. You don't know what real abuse is, but you're there saying that I am this person, that I did this to you and I did that to you, and I did nothing for you as well. You already know the madness that's, I got to the other day, and I called him and he had me. That's what I'm saying. That's what I say in my heart. Because like you know, you. like I've this... gone through a madness just last week, and I called. No him. one don't even know, bro. No like... one don't even know. No one even knows the story about me coming to help her. If your abuser has done so traumatic things to you. Would you call your abuser to come help you? The person that's manipulated you, the, the narcissistic guy, this wicked man has done you nothing, your whole like, relationship. Would you call him to come help you? You're the last person I would call if I went through the traumatic experience from this person. Why would I call that person? Why would I? It's a joke. Like if you lived with this person that she's created, you wouldn't even want to call this person. You would have a traumatic experience about them and think, you're a wow, I wouldn't want to be around this person. I don't want to see this person. I don't want to be around them. I don't want to chat to this person. But yet she calls me. Like, this is dumb. It's not real. We was very civil at this point, as you can see. We're there, she said, right? This is the truth. But I'm going to carry on and show you more. The only way I'm ever going to express details like that 
through music. I'm honestly only gonna express it through music. I don't think you're ever gonna see me on YouTube doing a sit down video um, bashing Ahmet. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna sit here and start saying he did this, he did that, he did this, he did that on a YouTube video setting. So after we split, we never discussed anything. Like I never knew what she was gonna do. I never told her not to do anything. Like she never told me what she was gonna do. Obviously I assumed she was gonna make music off this. Like it, it's a bit obvious, like that's what she does. She makes music off her experiences or whatever she's going through or whatever she wants to tell, how she wants to tell a story. Like you, you heard her in the video. She, she finds a better way to express herself, I get it. All the cheating stuff, I actually wanted to make a video when we was together because I felt so convicted of my sin. I felt so convicted of what I did like to her from the cheating. And I wanted to do a video, but she wouldn't let me do it because obviously she felt like she was going to be embarrassed. And I get it. So I never did that. So I wanted to express this from a long time ago when I found God. Like I couldn't forgive myself. I felt like God forgave me, but I couldn't forgive myself from it. So I felt like I needed to let it all out. But she didn't let me do that, so I get it. But I will talk about that side a bit later on in this video, so just keep following on along this timeline. Um, she said she's never you're never gonna see her on YouTube bashing me, talking bad about me. She's only gonna speak about it through her music. Cool, I get it. Had no problem with that. The only problem I had is when she used my voice. Yeah, she used my voice on her tracks. I never knew nothing about it, I didn't check for her nothing. Someone told me this. Someone called me and said, do you know you're on these tracks? And I was like, what? What? I don't know what's going on. What's happening? I heard the tracks. I was like, okay. So, and that's when I phoned her and said, what is this about? How are you using my voice on your tracks? I said, I'm going to, and then I said, I'm going to take legal action. You can't do this because this ain't right. You, that was invaded of my privacy. I didn't know you was recording me and for you to go put it on your music. Like it's wrong. So that's what I said. I told her I'm going to take legal action. So yes, I reported all the videos, did all of that. That was it. But then she said this. He emailed me telling me if I didn't take it down in 24 hours, he was going to take legal action. Um, sent me like the solicitor's website and all sorts. He, yeah. But everything is fine. He doesn't want to sue me anymore. He actually... <laughs> I don't mean to laugh because it's not funny. Sorry. I don't mean to laugh. That's what happened at the time out of anger on his side. He was angry, he felt upset, he felt betrayed by me because I put those voice notes in there. However, we have spoken since then. He does not want to sue me. He does not want to take legal action. He is not trying to report me anymore. And he actually wishes for us to be friends. So that's how you know, I ain't did shit. You know when a nigga still want to be your friend? <laughs> you ain't did shit. My ting them set clean over oh, here, sir. So, I won't be getting sued, and that's fine. I have nothing against him, I just want to put that out there, like, I have no beef with him. I did say I was going to take legal action in 24 hours. I did send her a solicitor's site and all that stuff, and I did report the videos because she was using my voice on her tracks, and she recorded me without me knowing. So yes, I thought this is wrong. This has to be some, some, some sort of copyright or something. Like, this is wrong. She said that I don't have a problem with it no more. And I actually want to be friends. That is a bold face lie. I never said none of that. If someone wants to take legal action against you and is angry, why would all of a sudden they just stop being angry and say, do you know what? I want to be friends with you. Really think about that. Why would I want to be your friend after I just said I'm going to take legal action against you? Why would I just... That's silly. Like it's dumb. It doesn't make sense. So she then says she has nothing against me and she has no beef with me. So far as everyone knows, we're civil, everything's cool, there's no problem, like we're good. She's just expressed her truth on her EP and that's that. No hatred towards me, nothing. And obviously in the EP, which she addressed the cheating, which is true, and she put some lies on top of that as well, just to make it a little bit better, but we'll get into that later on when I explain. <laughs> Why is this so funny? It's not funny. It's because I'm, as I know my ex, if you guys haven't noticed, I don't say his name anymore because I don't want it to seem like I'm always saying his name. But because I know him so well, the way he phrased the message was really funny to me. But then obviously I'm talking to Jamal and he's just like asking me all these questions as if I should be like upset, I guess. And um, 
I just thought I want to document my feelings right now. My feelings right now, finally, yes, I can fully proceed now and like get started with the first day of the rest of my life kind of thing. But I don't know if that's the initial feeling or is it mixed with the wine? So I'm going to have to sleep on it and let's see how for tomorrow. But right now, as it stands, receiving that message, it felt like, first I laughed because of the way he phrased it. So it made me laugh. So I felt happy. Then I felt a bit um sense of a relief, like finally, because I'm about to do it because I'm not paying for it. Listen, I paid bills for too damn long. I'm not paying for a divorce too. Come on. Like I don't really think I care. <laughs> and I don't know if that's a bad thing. Cause this channel particularly, obviously it was a joint channel with me and my ex. So the channel was mainly couples shit. This was a couples channel. Like when you really deep it, this was a couples channel. And now I'm trying to rebrand it as a solo woman. But I want it to be a bit of a positive, uplifting journey of self discovery. <laughs> when I got with my ex, I was 19. 19. 19 that's just so young like at the time i felt like i was a big woman but when you really think about it 19 is so young he was 23 i was 19. when we got together that summer i was 22 and she was 20. so i don't really understand why she puts like a four-year age difference between us when that's never the case you trying to make it seem like you was vulnerable when i was a grown man or something more older i don't get it like you can go check our date of births on the internet it's, it's all there it's not hidden like it's two and a half years age gap that's why i'm just annoyed every time i contact you about some serious stuff you make a video and you talk about it you document it like it's just childish in my eyes but this is when the madness starts like you say you don't care like you're not bothered about it you're laughing you're just saying that you paid too much so you're not going to pay for this which i'm going to talk about later on because that's just blown out of proportion as well but like you pay all the bills and all this stuff like that it's ridiculous but i'm going to get onto that later on so just just bear with me stay with me at this point because i'm going to carry on talking about that later on but at this point every time i contact you you're you're, you're you upload something you talk about it it's just silly so i'm gonna skip a couple months later on in the future about this text did he not text me in february saying hi um could i have your address so I can get the divorce proceedings started. Was that not in February? Are we not coming into June? Where's the papers? You text me in February and I didn't give you my address. I gave you my mum's address and you know my mum's address already so you're vex. Because he gave me a feisty response after I responded with my mum's address. Vex. Because he gave me a feisty response after I responded with my mum's address. You don't need my address for no papers. Tech my mother's address that you already have your vex. Cause you, you didn't really want to file no divorce. What you wanted to do was get my address. But you didn't get it, did you? You didn't get it. And now you're vex. Looking at that, where was I rude? Where was I looking to find her address? When you can see I said, send me an address that you receive mail. Where was I vex? Where was I rude? If anybody's rude in that text, because I'm the blue writing and she's the grey one, who was rude in that text? At this point, I thought we were cool. We was, we was cordial. I'm getting on with my life. I thought she was getting on with her life. Like, so I just thought, okay, let's start the, the divorce procedure. Like, what am I supposed to do? Who else am I supposed to contact? Where am I supposed to send these papers? Like, but then she's saying that I wanted her address when I said an address. So from that text message, and this and the video of the let the divorce proceedings commence look at the dynamic everything's all cool she says she'll never bash me we're cool uh, she's got love for me still but when that video dropped and that text happened look at the dynamic look at the timeline guys look at the videos look what videos are, are uploading how i found out how he cheated which i did i forgave my husband after he cheated how it finally ended and all the podcasts which is going on talking about me slandering me saying all the madnesses about me like it's crazy ain't it a coincidence that the dynamic changed from then from you being cool with me we're civil i'll never bash him i still got love for him and he's got me and got and i got her in the video that i showed you earlier and then all of a sudden after that text and after that video that she dropped uh, let the divorce uh, proceedings commence 
the dynamic shifted. Everything went mad after that. She started slandering me, liberal defamation of my name. Like this should, this is illegal. This is where it's, things became illegal. Like you can't do that to someone. So, then she then she played the victim card as if like I was torturing her, as if I was a manipulating, narcissistic, controlling, abusive, mentally and physical person. Like she she tarnished my character after that. Like that that's when it all started from that text message. Can you see it? When I thought I was getting on with my life, I thought she was getting on with her life. That's why I text her. I text her calmly and casually, for, as you can see from the text. I say, hey, hope you're well. Can you send me an address where you receive mail? She told me, boy, bye. You don't have to talk to me like that. You saw the text. I thought, what do you mean? I hope you are well. I generally hoped she was well. Like, that's why I said, okay, I guess. Like, I generally just wanted to address to start this procedure, this procedure. I thought everything was cool. I don't, like I said, like, this just took me by surprise. Like, all of this stuff took me by surprise. Going on podcasts, saying to these people that she's gone through this, she's gone through all of this. That's real trauma that people have gone through. And she's on other people's podcasts saying all this stuff about me, which is all lies. The only thing she said was true was, was the cheating. So putting all these things aside, all the horrible things and lies she was saying about me, she started to continue to do this because she was getting attention. She was getting attention from it. She was going what, what, viral from the, the, the lies she was saying about me. And even other people could see it too. I was on TikTok the other day um, and she said something really interesting. And I thought about it and I said, hmm, I get where she's coming from, but also at the same time, I'm like a little bit, okay. But then she said about obviously the money situation. She said, I would say, listen, uh, you know what? You've made me, you know, feel this way, whatever, whatever. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to get my money. You know, I'm going to get my money. Either way, I'm going to do these videos. I'm going to get my money. And I was like, okay, I get it. It's just that the venom that she kind of said it with. I was like, I said, baby, it sounds like we are going for revenge. And when we go for revenge, it gets a little bit sticky. Just saying, it can get a little bit sticky. And, you know, people's pride, both men and women, they it, can, ooh, it can get sticky. It can get sticky. You know, when people start going for revenge rather than, look, do you know what? I just want to get divorced. I want it to be amicable. Let's get out of here. But when people want to start doing, it can get sticky real quick. You know what I mean? It can get dangerous real quick. So, I don't know. The games that people play, oh, I, don't, I, I hope they have it quickly and done nicely, man. So, at this point... She didn't care what she said about me, the slander, the horrible things, because she was going for what? Her money, right? And here's another reason why. One thing I guess we could say I'm pressed about <laughs> is the fact that anytime there's drama or negativity, that's when all the views come in. Yeah. That's when everyone wants to watch. Well, it's, so, <laughs> it's so annoying because honestly, that's really how it, how it is. How it is. And I knew there would be views. I knew when it came time for me to do at least one video, I was going to get the views. Yeah. But I didn't expect it to start such a conversation. And I didn't expect so many women to say, I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah. For it to be posted on blogs, for it yeah. to be trending on Twitter. I didn't expect all that. I thought I'd just collect my little, my views, mm -hmm. get my little ad sense and go about my business. But yeah. this has really opened up a bigger discussion of women just really standing up for themselves. Do you hear it in her voice? Shh. When there's negativity or when there's drama, that's when people want to watch. That's when all the views come in, yeah? And she knew that when she made one video. She said she knew. So all of this, she thought, okay, I'm going to keep this negative and drama, keep it going. Because why? Because it's going to get me views. It's all about that. It's all about money for her. It's all about attention. The more views she gets on her videos about all this the horrible stuff that I did to her and everything, the better. Because she knew. She says it right there, if you can see it. Don't believe this. It's all lies. It's all about her getting attention. About her pushing her music or her image. That she's gone through all of this. And she saw there's people that are going through. No, there are people that are going through this. And you ain't the one, honey. You ain't the one. You ain't gone through this. You're pretending. You're an actress. Playing the traumatic victim of torture, of, 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 of abuse, of control, of manipulation, of being with a narcissist. Like what kind of human being exploits 
Real people that have gone through real trauma for their own gain. For your own public gain. That's what you did it for. It's not a joke. It's not something you, you can just, a word you can throw around. That's, it's horrible. You can't say things like that and get away with it. It's illegal to say something like that, especially on the internet, and get away with it and think that it's, it's fine. Just because you're trying to get some money. That's not right. That is wrong to the most highest level. Someone prior, remember prior to this, this text message, we were cool, we still got love for each other. I got him, he's got me. What happened? What happened to that? After that text message, this next kind of crazy Medusa woman started, just came out of nowhere. And at the same time, I'm gonna sit back and say nothing about it. I don't even wanna do this. I don't wanna do this video, but I have to. Like, I know what's right and I know what's wrong. And that is so wrong at so many levels. I have to call it out. Listen, no one's perfect. We all make mistakes. But this is a ridiculous one. You know exactly what you're doing. Because you know negativity and drama brings attention, right? You said it. You said it on someone else's channel. You know this. This is wrong. And you know it is. And to throw me under the bus at, at, at your expense, I'm going to call it out. I have to. You can't get away with things like this. This is serious. It's illegal as well. Do you feel like you're going to keep going in terms of, like, helping? Because I feel like you're helping a lot of women. Yeah. What is your plan in terms of, like... I want to. I want to help more women, and I want to help more women honestly, because I always used to do that before. Yes. In terms of, like, your standards, have they changed, or do you feel like you're going to have a different approach, or...? Yeah. I feel like now... I will not tolerate yeah. a man not doing anything yeah. for me. Because I can do everything for myself and I have done everything for myself yeah. while in a whole entire marriage. Not even exactly. just a relationship, a marriage. And I've done everything. Like, this, even to make it worse, like, you went on a whole big BBC podcast with a respectful woman, looked in her face, cameras all around you, whatever, and said all of this lies, saying that you want to help people that have been through these traumatic experiences when you haven't. You haven't been through this. You sit there and lie for your own, your own benefit just to get a bit of clicks, just to get a bit of attention. Like it's, it's wrong on so many levels. Like it's just bad man, proper bad man. If you really went through this, would you stay for that long? If someone, you did everything, the whole relationship, I did nothing for you. All I did was manipulate you, abuse you. Like we know that's a lie from that first video I showed you anyway. You, you, you spent 12 years with me and you'll never forget it, right? But now you're a victim of, of crime, basically. You're a victim of crime with this abuser. The reason why you're doing this is for attention and you're exploiting, you're exploiting real people for your gain. That's all it is. And if no one can see this, if you can't see this, then I don't know. Anyway, like up to this point, you've seen all the altercations and all the contact I've had with her. So now I'm going to move on to the next situation that happened. So I got a new iPhone, yeah, recently, and I was logged out of everything. So I had to log back in on everything on, this, on my new iPhone, right? I logged into my YouTube account and I didn't realise when I was logging in, I still had access to the old joint channel. So I logged into my account and I could switch to that account. So I didn't notice all this time, I didn't notice. So I logged in, so there was no hacking. People say that like, I hacked the account, I didn't hack nothing because I'm a legal owner to the account. Like I was, it was, I was the joint account, so I logged in. I logged in and I saw all the videos. This is when I saw everything because I've not checked nothing from this girl for the whole year. I haven't looked at none of her videos, nothing. This is when I saw all the videos of the lying and all the, 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 the everything she's saying about me. And this is when I thought to myself, oh my days. So what did I do? Yes. I deleted everything that she mentioned, my name and that I'm in, the videos that I'm in. If I'm such a horrible person, why is there videos from back when we was together still up? Vlogs, why? It doesn't make sense. So I deleted them. I have the right to remove this. It's my face, it's me. I don't want to be a part of this life anymore. So why am I still there? It, it, it doesn't make sense. And I feel like, like, what's the coincidence? I feel, this is why I feel like God is on my side or, or God's got me. It's like he gave me the access to do this. And then when I do this, she explodes and goes crazy the next day. And do you know what she did? She actually just exploded telling more lies on the explosion of this video that she was doing. She was lying and lying and lying again. 
And I hope you can see it now from the text messages. That video I, said, I played you earlier about the text message, she said, I got vexed with myself when I showed you the text message. Now, so you've seen it for yourself. But she exploded and was just saying so much more lies. Said, oh, yeah, this is the part where she said I actually put hands on her. This is when she said I was with teenagers, a teenage girl. Like, she, she, and this is when she said I deleted 636 videos. No, like, that's all lies. Like, and I can address the video one as well. I deleted videos, all me, the ones that were with me in it, and when she's mentioning my name and slandering me, of course I'm going to do that. I have the right to do that if I got access to the channel. But she lied about that. 636 videos. Never. I can even show you that. If you actually look at this, Playboard is a website that shows data analysis for all YouTube channels, yeah? This channel, of all time, has uploaded 490 videos, including the deleted ones as well. How can I delete 636 videos when in total from history, 490 videos have been uploaded and deleted? I'm showing you, you can go check it out yourself. Like, but the reason why she did that, she wants to, again, she wants to monetize attention. More lies, she wants to monetize and make it look worse than things are when it actually ain't that. Again, doing it, making it look like she's a victim of me doing something so bad to her. The little lies, you know, expose the big ones. Do you get it? Can you see it? You can't even keep up with the lies now because I'm catching her out on them. And I'm just showing you. I'm just literally showing you her content. This ain't nothing fresh. This is everything she said. Her tweets, her videos, everything. She's saying so many lies now, it's catching up on her. And I'm just showing you. Like, I'm just showing you her stuff. Like, if you can't see it yet, I don't know. Sometimes I may not explain it well enough. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to do my best here, innit? Because I know the truth. That's why I haven't said nothing all year. Since I contacted her about divorce, she loses it. She goes crazy. But I'm bitter. She goes mad after that, as I showed you from the timeline. Like, cut, cut, man. And another thing that I noticed as well when I logged into the YouTube account, because I haven't been on it in so long, I had a little look around when I was looking at the videos and the content that she'd done about me. And I realised that there was a lot of people that are understanding what I was coming from. But when you're looking on the public... It looks like everyone's just supporting her. Like just supporting what she, what's going on and everything she's saying. When it was never that. She blocked the comments. She's filtered the comments to control what's seen and what's not. So anything that goes against her won't be seen. Why don't you just let all the comments come through? Because you're controlling the narrative. It's all part of the plan, I guess. It even fooled me. Like I was like, wow, like why is everybody believing this or supporting her? Like, isn't there no one that can see this? There was hundreds of people that can see this. I don't want to say there was no sides. I don't like the sides thing. Like, oh, you're on my side, you're on this side. And there was videos made supporting me. And there was one particular video that, that was blocked that I watched. And it was like this person was my brother. It's like he was saying what needed to be said. I'll put the link in the description box, but this is some of it. It's just wild to actually know that a lot of comments that's to the public has never been seen. So it looks one-sided here. But like I said, I am the manipulator here. Wild. Like, there's just been too many lies. Like, I can't even keep up. Like, there's been, like, over, like, hundreds of lies about me where I just, I can't keep up. I wish I can address every single lie, but it's just so many. It's like, it's got out of hand. Like, she said, I'm her troll. I've been trolling her for years. Like, only just last week, I, I, I trolled her on Snapchat. I don't even have Snapchat. Like, I've been trolling her for years, saying this and that, trying to bring her down. I put hands on her. I beat her up. I was 35 with a 19-year-old. How does that make sense? You see the little lies? I'm 35 now. I cheated in 2019. How can I be 35 back then with a 19 year old? I was never with a 90 year old. I've never been with a teenager. And the only truth is, yes, I cheated on her. And when I was depressed back in 2016, when I got hit with a brick, when I couldn't fight, fight, like I couldn't box, I got depressed and she held me down. She held me down for that year and a bit, yeah. But I would expect that. Because I held her down when we first moved into our first apartment. I was working and training. And she didn't do nothing. So I was helping her get off of YouTube. She knows that. I did that for like two and a half years. So, wow, I was depressed because I got my freaking career got stopped. Wow, isn't that, isn't that what you're supposed to do when you're with someone? But she's using it against me now. As in like she paid all the bills. But I'm going to talk about that later on in the video. Like I'm going to talk about more about that. So this is the question I always ask, yeah? This is the question that people ask and, and people could probably ask you all the time. Which means you knew you were in the wrong relationship and you and you were staying in it. Why? And this is why I keep saying about why did you stay? It's not about you being an idiot. 
we have to be really real now. Why did you stay for as long as you did? And you know you didn't want to have kids with, uh, with him specifically because you know that something's wrong. But why were you staying? Because you were getting something out of it. And not money, but also the comfort of somebody, quote unquote, loving you, caring about you, being there for you, even if they're not doing the right thing. It's about not being lonely. It's about not being alone. It's about not being single. It's about not failing marriage. It's about not also being a divorcee. It's about all these different things that are also playing on the thing as well. But there's a deeper introspection that she'll need to take so she can reason with the reasons why she stayed in that place for so long, why she was not going to have kids, but then wanted to be in a, but stayed in the marriage for so long as she did. And people don't get it. They don't get the answer to that. Do you want to know why? Because you're lying. That's why. You can't just say because you're an idiot, like that man said. Because you're lying, that's why you don't have an answer. Like, this is just embarrassing now. I'm embarrassed that I have to do this. I'm actually a private person and she knows I'm a private person as well. That's why she's so confident to do this, to talk about all of this stuff. Because she knows I don't want to do these type of videos. She knows I don't want to respond to this and do all this, all this stuff. This is not no hate video. I've always wished her happiness. The last time I saw her when we moved out of the house, I shook her hand and said, I actually want you to be happy. Like, we're just two people that got together, lived together, and it didn't work. Why can't that just be the end of that? You learn from your experiences and you move on in relationships. Why are you going to be so mad about it? Like, I don't get it. And you saw the, the dynamic of how things shifted the last eight months. Like, it's just stupid and childish now. Like... And I'm here sitting there explaining, explaining the thing, explaining my relationship, explaining my marriage. I did wrongs in it, 100%. I did wrongs, but no one's perfect. Like I keep saying, you watching, you ain't perfect. You've made mistakes in your life. Probably you don't want no one to know. I'm being humiliated. I got to show you my flaws. Let me see everyone's closet. Everybody's watching this video. Everyone that's got their, their two cents on this video or on this two cents on this whole situation. Let's see inside your closets. The only difference is mine is getting laid out. I'm showing humility. I'm showing my, my inside of my closets. But I guarantee you there's a lot of closets that no one would, you wouldn't want. You wouldn't want people to see your shit. I hope that the things that are in my closet that you can see without my discretion of it happening, being shown, I hope you can learn from this. Someone takes something away from all of this. This is not the way to go about things as well. It's just not. And I hope you can learn from my experiences and maybe her experiences as well. Maybe one day she'll look at this and look at this whole situation and realise how childish she looks, how silly this is, and how it could have been handled in a better way. Alright, so this is the part where I'm going to talk about my story from the beginning of all time when we first got together, yeah? When we got together, like, I was just like this free spirit guy, free spirit boy, if anything. You know, I was immature, I had no wisdom, I had no experience in a relationship. I was 22 years old. Never been in a relationship before. Like, like I said, I've been with girls, but never been in a relationship to say, that's my girlfriend. Never. First time ever. I'm doing it. She's saying red flags, red flags, red flags. I should have seen from early. Okay, you should have saw them from early and done something about it. I'm an inexperienced man in a relationship for the first time in my life. How am I supposed to get things right from the get-go? The first month that we got together, I left the country to box, obviously, and then I came back. This is when I was using Facebook. I was talking to loads of people. When I came back from, from that trip, I went out. Of, I used to go out with my friends. We went out. And yes, remember there was a picture of me dancing with another girl in the club? I was young. I was young and living my life. <laughs> like, come on now. Let's be real, guys. At the ages of, of, the, of, of when these things are happening, you talk to multiple people. You're young. You're inexperienced. You're ignorant. Come on. Am I supposed to be some perfect man? You're talking about red flags from back then when I was 22 years old. Come on, man. If anyone's in their 30s now, yeah, are you the same person you was in your early 20s? You was young. When I look back at myself, I was young, ignorant, and dumb. I did a lot of dumb stuff. But you want to you throw that out there as if, like, that's me right now. From the beginning, yes, I got too deep in. It was two and a half years in, and we was getting married. And not even that, because I remember she asked me, do you want to get married? I was like, go on, and the next minute I got a ring. She gave me a ring, and I was like, cool, now I'm engaged. Cool, we're engaged now. In my mind, I wasn't thinking a marriage at that time. I was 24 now. I'm thinking, I'm not thinking marriage. I'm just focusing on me. I'm focusing on my, my career and my purpose in life or whatever. So I'm, saying, I'm still young in my eyes, isn't it? I haven't gone through a lot, you know? 
she wanted to get married and she goes oh i'm gonna apply for the show i was like yeah go on then in my mind i was thinking there's no way there was a way because it happened <laughs> it happened and then i thought damn i can't back out of this now i was in too deep do you know throughout the whole thing yeah we was good friends i didn't want to upset a friend i was very like it was, it was very cowardly of me to be like i don't want to upset anybody so i just went along with it I didn't want to upset anybody because in my eyes, I'm like, I don't want to be bad and all this stuff. And there was so much people involved. It's like, damn, the show involved now. I've got to do this thing. Like, it's like, would you turn it down? Because they're paying for this and doing that. It's like, man, I got too deep in and then I just went along with it. I never knew nothing about marriage. I was like, this is nothing. Like, I thought this was nothing. But back then, I never knew. I was immature. I never thought of marriage back then. I didn't really clock it. That was, it was a forever thing. And I knew this wasn't it. This wasn't a forever thing. In my eyes, it was just me and a female who was really, we got on very well. But it shouldn't have been what it was because I never had experience of having a really good friend, like a best friend as a female. So I thought that was supposed to be, well, if you're good friends with a female, doesn't that mean relationship? Doesn't mean you have to marry them. And I made that mistake. I did. And I've learned from it because it made me do so much other bull crap around it. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's brought me to this position now where I'm sitting in the seat explaining my life like some dummy, like. But I have to do this, innit? Because I can't just sit back and and allow this all to happen around me when I'm just sitting back thinking, raw, like, I have to say something. I've given my life to God. I've done that, like, back in 2020. Like, I'm no, I'm no moving hate. I'm just moving truth now. I'm not saying I'm a finished article like I'm some saint, like I'm still learning. I'm just trying to be my best and try to be righteous as possible. I know God gave me a new heart. I don't have a heart of stone no more. I have a heart of flesh now. I was born again. I know this. That's why it breaks my heart. The best advice I can give you is never lie to yourself. Or don't lie in general. Don't lie to no one else. And never lie to yourself. That's the one person you never want to lie to is yourself. I don't understand why we're even doing this right now. Putting our relationship, our marriage online and all this stuff like that. Like, two people was together. We lived a life together. It didn't work. End of. You say your one video if you want and keep it moving. I'm no longer in a relationship no more. I'm not in a marriage no more. I'm fighting for divorce. Done. But why has this been going on for so long? At first, you're saying nice things about me eight months ago. I drop you a text about divorce. You come for my neck. Go, going back to my story, I got, too far, I got too deep in. And then I was living this life with her. You know, I always was supporting this girl. That's why I find it so crazy how she says that, that, that I, I was secretly trying to bring her down. Like I was never proud of her or nothing. It's crazy for her to even say that. Even some people that have been watching us on vlogs, you've seen us on camera. Don't forget that stuff. This is something I shouldn't have been in. I know this now. That's why I said you never know what you're in until you're out of it. I shouldn't have been in it. But you know what? I've learned from this. You fail and get better. It's like owning a business. You, you fail at 50 businesses, then one succeeds. I failed. I failed here. I learned from it. I move on. I get better from it. I'm not going to make the same mistakes. That's why I said never again will I lie to myself for someone else to keep other people happy. That's one thing I'm never going to do again. Yes, I didn't want to be in it. I didn't love her, but doesn't mean I didn't have love for her. When she said that we, that, that was my best friend, I'll never forget it. I understand what she said. We was like best friends. I had love for her, like a best friend. But the first time in my whole life, this best friend was a female. So I thought maybe this is what love is, but it's not. It wasn't. I was never in love with her. And this is why I did what I did. This is why I did what I did throughout the whole relationship. She knows it wasn't all bad. It turned bad when bad happened to me. I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm not using it as a crutch. But it forced me to go down that road. I had a bit of structure in my life. That structure got broken through outside entities that happened. Then life really started to happen to me from then. That's when I woke up. It's not like I didn't, I didn't have love for her. Of course I did. That's the reason why it's almost like I was acting like a coward and I couldn't, I couldn't tell the truth. I couldn't tell her the truth because I didn't want to upset her. I don't have no badness to her right now. Even with all this going on, I forgive her for all of this. I don't care about all this. I just want us to move on and be happy. Just like I said to her when I saw her face to face last. I said, I wish you peace, man. I want you to be happy. You're not a bad person. For me to see you say all this stuff online is crazy. Like, it makes me just think, rah, boy. It makes me have no faith in humans. And there's no right and wrong. There's not a right person or wrong person. It's just two people that live together and it didn't work out. End of story. But I know what this is. It's a spiritual thing.
100%, because I was lost at one point, once, once upon a time, and now I've woken up. I've got God in my heart now. I've got Christ here. And that's the truth. I'm not here to be bad, and I don't hate no one. I'm never going to hold hate into it. I just want you to move, have peace in your heart. Have some, what I'm doing right now, I hope to just give you some sort of closure. Because the person I'm seeing now is a totally different woman. It, it, it's just mad, man. Like, I think I need to really express this whole timeline thing as well. Because again, she's mixed some truth, but she's mixed up the timelines and stuff like that. Do you get me? So when we got, we got married, right? And then we moved into our first apartment. I was working and I was training boxing at the same time. Like I had a lot of hours. She knows I was doing 12 hour shifts and I was training as well. So I was doing night shifts and I was doing, um, I was training as well in the morning and stuff like that. So I was sleeping the day. That two and a half years, I was paying for everything. I was paying the rent, yeah? I was paying the rent while she was thinking, okay, we're now living alone in our own apartment, our first apartment. She's gonna get off the ground with the YouTube. Yeah, she's gonna get, so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand by you, I'm gonna support you. Do what I gotta do, you know, hard work, whatever. You know, hard work pays off, innit? So I'm gonna work, I'm not a complainer. I'm just gonna get on with it. I'm gonna do the job, I'm gonna train. So things will start to pick up for her on YouTube. Good girl, like, I'm happy for you. That's what I wanted. I'm not just frigging going to work and training and doing all these hours and stuff for nothing. I want you to frigging big yourself up. I believe in you, I did, always. So for her to say that I never supported her in anything, it's just nuts to me, innit? Like, it's crazy. She can say all she wants. It's all good, innit? Like, I, so I know what I did. I know what I supported. I know the hours I put in and whatnot while she was doing what she was doing. It's cool. You get me? So after that apartment, this is when she wanted to move. So we was looking around for bigger places because he said where we was living wasn't big enough. We was only living in the two bed. You know, it was a big bedroom, a small bedroom and an, um, an open plan kitchen, yeah? And a sitting room. So cool. It was our first apartment. It was calm. It was a nice one, modern, all that stuff. It was nice. We was looking for a bigger place. Yeah, we was looking around and then, yes, my connect, because she says my connect. Yeah, it was my connect. I have a connect. I have connections. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> Should someone be bad because they know people? It's a good thing to know people. So don't try to make it look like it's a bad thing. My connect showed us a five bedroom house, not too far from where we was living already. So we showed us it. It was big. You know the house already. You know the house. Showed us it. I was like, I don't know, you know, because it cost this much. This is the first time I was probably thinking a bit grown up. I was like, I don't know, it costs this much money. It's a lot. It's big. But she was like, no, no, do you know how much content we can do here? We can do this, we can do that. Come on, let's do it. Like, so I was like, you know what? The person who risks nothing has nothing and does nothing. So I said, let's do it. Let's just take the risk. We took the risk, jumped. You get me? We jumped. I listened to her. I thought, you know what? YouTube is picking up for you from all the frigging support that I'm doing when I'm going to work and all this stuff. It's working now. So I thought, cool, I'm going to take the risk. Why not? Once again, I support you. So I said, well, let's move, let's do it. Yeah. Within that same year, obviously, I got hit with a brick. I got attacked with a brick a week out from when I was supposed to fight for a British title. That's what happened. Yeah, my career stopped after that. I was depressed. I was smoking weed that year. I was low. That was probably the one time when I said, you know what, I was, I was, I was out of my head. I was like, yeah, I'm going to top myself. I said that. She's using that as if I was saying now, oh, if you leave me, I'm going to top myself. Come on. I was low. I was at my lowest point in my whole life. I said that. Don't use that. Don't use that against me right now. I was at my lowest point in my whole life. Smoking weed. I was out of it. I was not doing nothing. That's the year that she was holding it down. After that, when I picked myself back up, I said, you know what, I can't do this no more. I've got to, get, I've got to do something because I'm going to lose myself. Do you get me? I picked myself back up. I got my personal training thing. I started working again. I thought, cool. She said to me, do you know what? Why don't you just jump on this YouTube thing with me? Let's get on this properly. Let's do this now. So what did I do? I did. I jumped on YouTube. We have vlogs, little challenges here. You, you know all the videos. But you know what I'm talking about. I did the whole... YouTube couple thing with her in this house. We did that. We was making money together. It was a together thing. So she wasn't paying all the bills by herself and stuff like that. I was paying some bills. The rent was coming out of her account. I was very immature as if like, I didn't want to handle things. It's like, I was, I'll send you money and we're making money together. Yeah, that's paying it. So I was, I didn't, it's like, I didn't set things up in my name. It was always set up in her name. But we was making money together. Do you think I'm just jumping on this YouTube channel? Just, just for fun. It wasn't for fun. I was working. I was working at the same time. This is when I was doing P. I I started personal training because I wasn't boxing anymore. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do personal training. I like to help people. That's, that was me. I was helping people. I was doing that. 
I was jumping on YouTube as well, making money with her. So that's how she was getting paid. I wasn't just sitting back doing nothing. The way she's going on, as if like I was just using her or something. That was never the case. We was making money together on YouTube and it was paying for stuff. So don't try and mix up the timelines. She's trying to mix up the timelines of when I was really at my lowest of lowest. And I said, oh yeah, if you leave me, I'm going to top myself. Never happened. Never. Mixing truth with lies. Again, the cheating, yes, that happened. I was low still. I was upset. I wasn't doing things that I, wanted, I really wanted to do. Like, it, it is what it is. I cheated. When she found out, that should have been the end of it. That should have been the end of it. It should have. But we got past it. We moved on. So after this point, I got myself out of depression. I wasn't happy because I was still smoking. You know, I was still smoking and I was working at the same time. I wasn't fully happy. But this is the times when I was lost. I didn't know I was lost at the time, but I was lost now. I know now I was a lost soul. I know this. You get me? So I, like, it is what it is. You grow now. When it, I've, I've woken up now to what it really is. I was, I was really low. I wasn't happy. I still wasn't happy. So that's when the cheating happened. I thought that it was going to make me happier, but it didn't make me happier. At the time when you're doing it, you don't really clock it. But if you're in love with someone, you don't even have, you don't even want to be with anybody else. You don't even want to do that with someone else. I was still down. So I was looking for, it's like almost like coping mechanisms. Some people lead to drugs. Some people go to drink. Some people do all that. That was my thing. Mine was weed and women, I guess. So I, this is when the cheating started. I'm going to address little things as well. Like these little things like this, like in an EP, like, from what I've heard, I haven't listened to no music to be honest, to be a real view. I've only listened to snippets of it. For her to, to put my voice in these in these tracks, and then she's talking about something completely different from what the voice note is. So my voice, you're having a different subject of what, what you're talking about. And I don't like that. It's like what I was talking about in the voice notes ain't nothing to do with what you're talking about in your song. But you mix it. She mixes the truth with lies. She even did it in her a story time. She'll tell the truth about me, the cheating, but then she'll add a lie on top of it. She'll tell the truth and then add a lie. That were two people, again, I'll say it again, two people that spent a life together. It didn't work out. Say your story, keep it moving, done. And this time, she wasn't paying bills alone. This is when we was doing YouTube together. This is when we was paying the bills together. So it was never a loan thing. Yes, the, 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 I guess she feels like she was paying alone because it was coming out of her account. But everything was coming out. The money, the money that from our YouTube was going into her account. So that's why. She was doing her YouTube channel. We was doing our YouTube channel. It was making money. We did what we did. Like, that vlog, if I can remember once, the, the vlogmas, one time we did vlogmas, and we made over six grand that month. So... Where do you think the six grand went? Where do you think that went to? And on top of that, I was paying bills in the house as well from my account. Just the, the rent was coming out of her account. That's all it was because the YouTube money was going to her account. Like it's really annoying to talk about money and accounts and how much you got paid and stuff online. It just feels private, but I just want to make things clear because she's saying that she was paying bills too long and all this stuff like that. Well, the last place we was living in, the last place you just moved out of, um, we was paying the, the rent half and half. There was a couple months where I paid the rent by myself. She didn't pay anything because she had bills to pay. She had no money left in her account. She wasn't making money. So for her to say that she paying bills too long, there was a couple months where you paid nothing. You couldn't pay it. So I had to pay it on my own. I had to find the money. Sometimes I actually, because actually, times was like, this is COVID times, isn't it? I wasn't really working that too much. So I did borrow money sometimes, but I paid it back. So it's the fact that she's saying that she paid the bills and all stuff. Even when I wasn't living in this, I think, you know when I moved out? Since I moved out, I was still, imagine this, you're not living somewhere, but you're paying half the rent still. I was paying half the rent ever since I moved out as well. So there was months when, we was, when I was living there when she didn't have money to pay the rent. So I paid it by myself, a couple months, yeah. Ever since we moved in that place, I always paid half the rent or more. Even when I wasn't living there, I still carried on paying half the rent. And I went on for probably about eight months. I'm not even living there no more and I'm still paying half the rent. Yes, I'm going to pay half the rent because you know what? There's a child involved. Obviously, my name was on the lease as well, so cool. So why would I ch choose to leave and say, I'm not going to pay half the rent because I'm not living there no more, so you handle it. I'm not going to do that. I paid it all the way until we moved out. But I guess, you know, I guess I'm a horrible person, right? I guess that ain't the truth, right? She knows the truth. Even another thing I just remembered, when she got mad, she mentioned her niece saying that I, was, I tried to sabotage for her to have custody. The whole time when I wasn't even living there, every time the social worker contacted her, 
I came round acting like I was living there because I was going to be a legal guardian to her niece. Like we both agreed that we was going to play along the game because we thought that it would be better for her to get custody of her niece. We didn't want to take no chances of her going into care. So that's why we did that. The social worker picked up a vibe between me and her. So she was questioning and saying, are you okay? Are you guys okay? And I was willing to be a legal guardian. It was hard for me to like break away. When, you, when you're, you know, changing nappies, I was looking after her, when, even when she was out of the house, when it was just me and her, putting her to bed. She, was, she used to fall asleep on my chest. Like, everything. I was acting like a father figure to this child. And then I had to break away. Do you know how hard that was? But then she says I was trying to sabotage it, when all I was trying to do was help to get custody. She told the social worker, I, I moved out and we're not longer together anymore. It's a shame that she even had to say that. You didn't need to do that. That was, that was, that was a low blow and that hurt. Anyway, I'm not going to carry on talking about it because children are innocent. The fact for her to say that I never did nothing for her in this whole relationship is just bamboozling to me because it's like, I'm a person that likes to keep people happy. I like to make people happy. That's just in my nature. And I feel dumb to even mention these little things, but it's like, if anyone ever remembers when she said that, that her stuff got stolen out of the boot of her car, her laptop got stolen. The laptop that she's editing on right now, or the laptop she has right now, who got her a laptop a week later? She got a brand new MacBook laptop a week later after her, 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 her laptop got stolen and a few clothes out of her boot. But I had never done nothing for her. I know it's so petty, but the little things. One day I was working, I went into the Apple Mac store and just got her some beats, uh, um, I got her some Apple headphones. And I walked in the house and said, here you go, because I got some and I thought, oh. She said, oh, I wanted those and I got her a pair. But I did nothing. That's just one of many things. I don't have to mention this. I don't, I don't, it feels stupid to mention it. The whole time, I'm like, I like to see her happy. I did that, I took her out. I took her places. You don't stay with someone for 12 years and they do absolutely nothing for you. If someone stayed like a year with someone, two years, and we did nothing for me, come on. 12 years, and I did nothing for you. I never bought you anything, I never took you anywhere, I never took you out, I never celebrated nothing with you. It's just nuts for you to say that. It's very mind boggling, like, that people would actually believe it as well. Think about it, guys, 12 years. I don't have to, I, like, it feels dumb to mention it, to even say it. Like, it's just dumb, like, it's just so dumb. Like, I don't want to laugh at this point, but it is like, it's comical. It's stupid. Like, from everything I've shown you from this whole video, yeah? Because there is no right and wrong in this, in this whole thing. It's just one big learning experience that we can all take from it. Maybe you watching can learn from it. Hear what I'm saying. Don't make the same mistakes from her or me. There is no right and wrong. It's just experience and we move on. We learn. I have been doing my own thing for the past year and a bit. Not checking nothing, not doing nothing, looking over there. For her to be like, I'm bitter, I'm jealous. It's just, wow, really? Like, come on, man. Like, I'm sorry to say it. And I don't want to be like, 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 I'm not trying to make it seem like something, but who actually looks mad in all of this? I'm not even trying to make it look like, oh, like I'm right. I know I did a lot of wrong. I did a lot of wrong. I've learned my mistake. I've learned from my mistakes. Trust me, I've, <laughs> I've learned from my mistakes. Keep it G, keep it real. Don't lie to yourself because you're going to end up effing yourself. The probably biggest decision you make in your life is who you spend the rest of your life with. That is probably the truth. The biggest decision you make in your life is who you spend the rest of your life with. So make a very wise decision. Don't take it lightheartedly. Don't. And I'm not saying, oh, the 12 years of my life was a bad one because there was good times. There was a lot of good times. Yes, it was like I was with my best friend. It was. But I was just never in love. I had love for her, but it, was, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't in love. No, I'm sorry for that, like, don't hang me by the tree for that, you know? Everything I did in between was wrong, yeah. But I'm just addressing the truth. I'm addressing what it really is. I'm not a horrible person. There was never no horribleness off camera. Um, that's not in my nature. From 2016 up to 2019, yeah, the, 2016 when I was at my lowest. I was at my lowest point when I said I would top myself. I said I didn't want this life anymore. That was when everything was fresh, when everything was taken away from me fresh. Year and a half, I was really down. I picked myself back up again. 2019, I cheated again, yes. And then after that, I found God. Like, I got answers. Like, I was praying to God, because I, I came a bit low again. This is when the whole pandemic happened and everything. And I say pandemic, yes. Like, when the pandemic happened and everything. And um, I was really low. And I think the, the world kind of went low. But this is when I really woke up to myself, because I spent a lot of time with myself, as you do, because of lockdown and everything. 
And this is when it really started to happen for me, like when God started to speak to me. I was praying a lot. I started to read the Bible a lot. I was watching a lot of sermons and I, I, I just felt convicted of so much. You know when I said I couldn't forgive myself? I had to, I, I, it's like, like I gave my life to God that year. I felt like God was speaking to me. And I was reading the Bible a lot and I was understanding so much about this world. Like, this part, I don't even know if I can say certain things on here. I don't know, like if the video might get removed or whatever, but there's a lot of truth. And I'm, also, I'm just going to say, listen, prayer is real. Prayer is real. Like, I got a lot of, you know, questions answered. I asked God to give me a spiritual eye after I gave my life to Christ like I did. She knows that as well. I tried to show her things. There was a time when I actually did a, um, a My Protein shoot. I went to Manchester for one night. I stayed in the hotel. And that night when I went up there, she phoned me and she was on this app called Bego. You don't know this. Some of you know anyway. And, and she said that she spoke to someone talking about God with her. And then she came on the phone crying to me saying that she wanted to get baptised. And I was like, wow, like look at God working again. God works in mysterious ways, you know. So there was no, it wasn't like she didn't know about all of this. It's just, I asked questions and I asked, I asked for answers and I got answers, you know. I got answers, like I know God was speaking to me and that's when, after all those answers, that's when I said, yeah, I have to go. I can't stay in this cloud in the, in, in the house with, the, with her anymore because it's not right. I'm just lying to myself. So that's when I left. And I was just, I've been following that God's path since then. Like I have. I've been doing my best just to, 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 to be a righteous person and learn and just live in, live in, live in the way I'm, I know I'm supposed to now. So that's why I have no like hate in my heart. Because i got a new heart now and I forgive her for everything. I don't, like anything that's done against me and I hope she forgives me for all the things I've done to her. I thought she did when we moved in, but I guess she didn't because this is why this is happening. Like, I don't know, like, I hold no hate in my heart. I hope we can put this in the past because anything in the past belongs to death now. I don't want to live in the past. I'm living in the now and the future and that's it. It came to a point where we both know it wasn't going anywhere, but I knew it was done. So I chose to leave. I didn't want to live in a cloud anymore. I didn't want to have this dark cloud over my head in the house living. It just, it wasn't right. And I knew God was giving me the answers to, to go. It was done. It never was, it never really was what it was. And I don't think it, it was ever going to be. So I was getting answers and answers. I don't have to tell you guys the answers. I prayed on it, got an answer. Prayed on it, got an answer. Prayed on it, got an answer. Sometimes I ignored all the answers till one day I said, you know what? Every time I got an answer, I ignored it. I got hurt more. So I just had to leave. I had to go. And then ever since I left, I look back now and I'm like, it was the best decision I did. Because I, I, I first time in a long time, I listened to myself. I listened to God, actually. It wasn't even myself anymore. I don't live for myself. I live for God now. That's the new me. The old me is dead. The person that she's talking about is dead. He's not alive anymore. He's gone. That's the old spirit. I'm a new spirit now. So the person you're talking about doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, he's here in body, but I'm not body. I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit living in this body. My spirit is changed. I'm different now. I'm not that person anymore. Ever since I gave my life to God, I've been completely different. And maybe that could be a big reason. Maybe she liked the old, the old spirit. Maybe the spirit over there where she is right now likes the old spirit. But that guy's gone. That spirit's gone. So maybe that's why this you know, fast-tracked the breakup. Maybe it, it fast-tracked me moving out. So you know where I'm at right now. I have no hate in my heart. I don't live in the past because the past belongs to death. That's it. It's done. I'm not going to make another video after this. Anything you want to say, if she makes, I don't know, she's going to make videos, it's whatever. She let her do what she's doing. I just hope maybe one day she'll wake up. She'll wake up and see what this really is and she'll get, she'll have some peace in her heart because that's all I ever wanted. From everything I've shown in this video, you can see I never had no hate towards her. All I've ever been was trying to be respectful and keep it moving right in the right way. I didn't want to do this video, but I had to do it to defend myself because it can't just be one side talking about someone else. He, he, he ain't even here no more. The person she's talking about ain't even here no more. That spirit's gone long time. She knows the truth. I'm not here to prove anything more. Whatever she talks about now, I don't care. It's in the past. I'm moving on. I'm a new spirit now. I've been, and I'm going to keep moving in the light of God. I'm going to still move in this light. I'm not moving in darkness. Because, you know what? Nothing good comes out of anything evil. Nothing good comes out of anything evil. I have to say that again. So, 
This is the end of this for me. I'm not going to make no more videos about this. This is a chapter that is behind me and closed. It belongs to death. I'm moving in light. I want life. I don't want to do this no more. I'm not going to, I, I wish her the best. If there's any communication going on now, it's going to be about the separation. That is it. I don't wish her no harm. I don't wish her, I wish her goodness. I actually want her to be happy. And finally, I just want to say thank you for all the people that can really see this for what it really is. I saw your comments, you know, I know they ain't seen to public, but I saw them. And because I really thought that this, this was just one side and no one really could see what this really was. So I just want to say thank you to all those ones that can see this and can see the other side of me and the new side of me and, and can really just know what this really is. So thank you for all the ones. And I don't like even saying, like, this ain't no taking sides thing. The ones that were supporting, I just want to say thank you. God bless you. And God bless to everybody as well. 